Congresswoman Sydney Kamlager, Dove of California. Welcome, Congresswoman. I, I want to start with your immediate reaction to the text of this bill or the news of the text. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to read it. Well, I, we, I'm still reading through it, but I can tell you that uh, I don't subscribe to a laddered CR. I don't know what that really means. I actually thought that was a, a Dr. Seuss book. Uh, Democrats have said over and over again that we will support a clean CR that has all of the appropriation bills in it. So, you know, cascading, uh, rolling, you know, uh, shutdowns of the government is not something that we are going to support. You know, I came from local government and state government. You know, all of the constituents that I talk to say government needs to be more collaborative. We need to work, you know, uh, together. De de uh, departments and agencies should be collaborating rather than working in silos. And pushing a two-tiered or laddered system actually further continues this notion of government working in silos, which doesn't do anything to keep the government open or to help the American people. So, Congresswoman, um so you don't think a laddered CR is a fair trade in exchange for keeping 2023 spending levels? And if not, can you just explain to the American people as to why? Because I think they're going to hear over the next couple of days that this is basically a clean CR. And I think if House Democrats are not going to support this, you got to be clear about why. So this is a lot of hocus pocus coming from a new speaker who was an anti-institutionalist who voted to shut the government down, who comes with the stamp of approval from a former president who is now, you know, going to trial, standing trial, trying to defend his own madness. This is a speaker who was punching above his weight. Democrats have had to come in and save the day twice because of manufactured crises, you know, developed and designed by the Republican Party. We do support a clean CR, but everything else, what does that mean? I mean, how much of the government are you going to fund into January? And then what are you going to go and tackle for, for February? The American people need to have that information. And quite frankly, all of the departments need to be funded at current levels so that we can have folks working, answering the phones, making sure that constituents, when they are calling because they need help with their Social Security, they need help with their veterans benefits, they need help with housing vouchers, they need help with visas and passports, we'll have someone at the other end of the line helping them. Congresswoman, I, look, the American people, they have seen, and you, you know, really spoke to this, a debt ceiling standoff. They've seen multiple shutdown threats this year alone. I, I do think that there are folks out there who maybe have lost faith in Congress's ability to do its job. Uh, do you share that concern, at least under the leadership of House Republicans? Well, I think um, the American people have lost faith in the Republican. Uh, doing their job, but not the Democrats, because they know that we came in to save the day with the NDA, and we they know that we came in and saved the day with this last government shutdown that we prevented. We also saved the day last Tuesday. We saw voters come out and say, you know what, I support Democrats. I support the Democratic Party. They supported us in Kentucky. They supported us in Virginia. They supported us in Ohio, because they know that we are doing what it takes to keep the government open to make sure that Americans still have access to their rights, their constitutional rights, and we are about governing, not stoking culture wars and threatening chaos because of egos that are permeating on the floor of the House of Congress. As my colleague Julie Serkin just reported, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, he has already announced that he's going to pursue a clean continuing resolution, one that is clean by uh, the standards. I know a number of Democrats in the House have laid out. What discussions, if any, are happening between House Democrats and Senate leadership right now? Because it's my understanding if the Senate, you know, uh, moves to before the House does, then the Senate bill must be considered. So once again, I think there's a lot of hocus pocus going on by this speaker to conflate and confuse. We have said time and time again, Democrats, we will step up and we will vote for a continuing CR. So you know what we did last week? We voted on crazy things, like cutting the funding for the office of the vice president, cutting funding to prevent drunk driving, cutting funding for HUD and for transportation and highway safety, cutting funding for a national EV infrastructure program, cutting funding for gender policy efforts, cutting funding for the office of gun violence prevention. That is what Republicans want to put in these appropriation bills, and that is what Republicans want to push forward. We are saying, just fund the government, stop with the nonsense, stop with the chaos, because we don't have time for this. Mm. 
Congresswoman, uh, last question before you go. Uh, aid to Israel, and I would also argue aid to Ukraine, is a not a part of this conversation. Uh, there are reports that the White House is actually planning to do a forceful push about this, linking Ukraine aid as well as Israel aid to the issue of Iran, and saying folks that don't support that, according to Politico, people that don't want to vote in support of this are voting to side with Iran. Uh, your thoughts on this? I mean, the Republican committee chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee that you serve on has acknowledged that this aid bill that was passed by the House that talked about just Israel aid, cuts to the IRS, no aid to Ukraine, that it wasn't going anywhere. Your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, conditional aid is not something that Democrats support. We need to be pushing forward an aid package that, uh, you know, funds Israel, that funds the Ukraine, and quite frankly, that also funds uh, Taiwan. Now, granted, we need to be having, you know, discussions about funding military as well as pro promoting diplomacy in these issues. Um, but this is going to be DOA, and I think the speaker knows that. Mm. All right. California Congresswoman Sydney Kamlager-Dove, thank you very much.